In the previous session, we have discussed about the drying equilibrium. And in this session, we will focus on this kinetics of drying, that is the rate, okay, which is very important to schedule uh, batch drying equipment in terms of its drying time, then down time, and for again manual loading and unloading, etc. Or for continuous equipment, we have to determine the size of the equipment based on the design capacity. So, and for that, we require the drying test, right? And drying test means the rate test or drying rate curve. Just like it is very similar that when we design a continuous reactor, we will discuss in reaction engineering that when we design a continuous reactor, first we have to explore the kinetics of this reaction, right? So, we explored the process in batch system and that and from there uh, we have to interpret this batch reactor data in terms of the rate equation. And the rate equation is used to design the continuous reactor considering its residence time distribution and the mixing model. So, here the same logic we are going to apply. We will conduct the drying test in batch drying setup under some specific conditions and constraints and we will extend this data or we will rather use this data to determine the size of a continuous drying equipment, right. Uh, <coughs> in addition to this drying test there in the design, we have to use the basic principles of mass and heat transfer to formulate the design equations and finally the sizing of this continuous equipment. Now what is drying test? <coughs> drying test or batch drying test right here we have to hang this solid over a hanging pan on a hanging pan and this chamber is exposed to continuous flow of this drying medium. Flow of drying gas, right. So, if I know this, this if we mount it to a balance, right. So, you can record how the weight is changing with time, right. And if I know the dry solid weight, we can actually calculate how the capital X, say the dry solid weight is Ws and the weight of the solid. at time t of the drying test is W t. So, x is obviously or rather x t is obviously W t minus W s that is the weight of the moisture divided by W s, right. So, we will get the x as a function of t from this type of drying test. Now, we have to understand that in order to generate order to ensure repeatability, we must uh, apply constant is called constant drying condition, right. What are the conditions? So, in the constant drying, see, similarly supported, it should be the sample should be similarly supported.
on the tray or pan, right? Next, same ratio of drying to non-drying surface. What does it mean? Here, see, if if uh, we think that there is a solid in 3D. So, this base area is the non drying surface because it is having contact with the pan and the rest of the uh, 6 uh, this uh, 5 out of 6 phases they are drying surfaces. So, same ratio of drying to non drying surfaces are to maintain same conditions velocity, humidity and temperature of the drying gas and fourth same radiative heat transfer condition if it is a high temperature operation. So, these are the conditions we have to maintain in order to ensure this constant drying condition set up, okay. So, with that if I go on experimenting with this specific setup under constant drying condition, we can generate an x versus t plot, right. So, primary outcome of drying test is the x versus t plot, okay. So, what is that or how it looks like? This is t, this is x, it looks like this, where this will be the initial moisture content, sorry, uh, equilibrium mass or final moisture content xf or rather x star. It is not the final, it is the equilibrium moisture content. This is xi, right. So, initially we can have either this sort of plot or this sort of plot. So, this is regime 1. Up to this, it is regime 2, then regime 3 and regime 4, right. So, what are the implications of the different regime we will explain, but not in this space of x versus t, but rather in a different phase space. And what is that? See, from this initial x versus t plot, we can convert x versus t plot to n which is drying rate versus x plot. Now, how to get or how n is defined? n is defined as minus of c w s divided by a d x d theta, right. So, x is progressively decreasing. So, d x d theta or rather you see that mass of the moisture is w s into x. So, if we take the derivative differential d m moisture, it is w s into d x, right. Now, we have to convert it in terms of flux in order to get a universal variable because the area for different samples may be different. So, area it is to be divided and we will take the differential of time that is theta, right, this time in the denominator in order to express it uh, conveniently in the form of rate. So, <coughs> n versus x plot is to be generated and you see how we can see this or how the curve looks like, let us discuss about it.
this is equilibrium moisture content and this one is initial moisture content, this is the critical moisture content Xc, this is Xc prime. So, initially the phase 1, so same regime 1 is called initial adjustment period. Let us first discuss about the name and next I will explain what is the physical situation here. Next regime 2, this is called constant rate drying regime and this entire section from this point to this point it is the combination of 3 and 4 falling rate period. The falling rate period has got a linear section and a non-linear section. This does not mean that everywhere we will get a linear and non-linear section. It may be entirely linear, it may be entirely non-linear. That depends on the type of the solid. So, this regime that is regime 3 is referred as unsaturated surface drying and in the regime 4 it is the internal movement of moisture controlling regime. Right. Now, let us start with the discussion of constant rate drying. See the constant rate drying and this is the constant rate Nc, constant rate drying regime. What happens here? Here the surface is entirely covered by this. So, this is solid and this is the thin film of liquid, right. So, once we have this thin film on the surface, the adjacent air layer, what is the humidity? Definitely it is the saturation humidity and the air flows with the humidity K. And we know that N the flux, molar flux is K y prime into H minus H s, right. From humidity or humidification and cooling tower operations we have discussed about it, particularly in relation to the dry bulb and wet bulb temperature. So, this is N c, nothing but N c. Now, you see that as long as we have a thin film on the surface being covered, covering the entire surface, we have everywhere the adjacent air layers humidity equal to saturation humidity. So, this is saturation humidity and this is the humidity of drying gas. Essentially, this two remains constant as long as we have a film, thin film covering the entire surface of this solid and K y prime that depends on the flow hydrodynamics which for identical conditions of this gas flow will remain unchanged. As a consequence we have a constant rate drying period right. So, this up to this we have a constant rate drying period and this is called the critical moisture content up to which the constant rate drying is being maintained. So, this is critical moisture, right. So, after that what will happen? Second or this regime 3, or sorry regime 2 and regime 3 is the uh, unsaturated surface drying. See, as we continue drying 
after this stage, what will happen? Dry patches will appear on the surface and the surface in the section will look like this. Here we have a water fill, here we have a water fill, but over this is the external surface, exposed dry external surface of the solid, right. And here the adjacent air layer to this exposed surface will have a humidity H prime which is less than Hs and here it is Hs. So, this region having a humidity H prime, this is having Hs. So, Nc we can write as a, say a fraction chi into Ky prime H prime minus Hs, this is the area fraction of dry patch plus 1 minus x prime k y prime uh, this uh, sorry uh, this is h minus h prime plus h minus or uh, this uh, rather h prime minus h or h s minus h. So, this chi the area fraction of the dry patch increases with time right d chi dt is positive because more the drying proceeds what will happen the film will vanish and the surface area will be continually or progressively being more occupied by this dry patches and as a consequence we have the drying rate falls with time. So, this is n right. So, n is a function of time and time is alternatively a function of x as we have seen here. So, n is a function of x and it is nearly linear as we have seen from the experimental data, right. And after this stage what happens? The entire surface of the solid is dry, right, regime 3, oh sorry, regime 4, entire surface of the solid is filled with dry patches and drying rate depends on the rate of transport rate of transport of moisture <coughs> from the core of the solid. That is alternatively the internal region, right. And that is why this region is called as internal movement of the moisture controlling regime, right. It may happen that evaporation is taking place from a plane which is beneath the external surface, it may, it, it can always happen, right. And this transport of the moisture is primarily being governed by this rate of capillary transport, rate of vapor diffusion, rate of liquid diffusion or maybe pressurization, right, as we have discussed regarding the mechanism of drying. So, that is the different phases and see initially what happens, initially we can have T s i may be less than T s equilibrium, right. So, we have, we may be using a solid surface which is having a surface temperature which is lower, right, than the equilibrium temperature. So, in that case, so there will be higher sensible heat transfer from the gas to that solid and solid temperature will increase and this rate of drying will also increase. On the other hand, if the original solid is hot, TSI is less than sorry, TSI is greater than TS equilibrium, then it will release more heat right through this mass transfer and sensible heat transfer will be less unless these two rate of mass transfer, the, the, sorry two rates of heat transfer they are being same that means the system attains equilibrium. 
So one is the basically the mass transfer via evaporation, which is taking off the latent heat. So alternatively, we call it as latent heat transfer. And another is the sensible heat transfer. So when these two are equal, we can say that this is an equilibrium has been attained and the drying proceeds at a constant rate, right? So that's the overall idea of the different regimes of this drying curve. And next, from this basic equation, we'll try to now relate that how we can calculate the drying time for constant rate period and for the falling rate period. Now you see if this case 1, if xf the final is less, sorry, it is greater than xc, right. So drying time theta is equal to the constant rate drying, okay. <coughs> and we have nc is equal to minus of ss divided by a dx by d theta. So if I integrate, so this is SS by A xi minus xf divided by theta c. So theta c becomes SS divided by A, SS or WS whatever I have written, okay, let it be WS. xi minus xf by nc, right. Now case 2, xf is less than xc, the entire falling rate regime is linear, okay. So we can write here, here the curve, these are, here from we have most of the gate problems that here this is constant rate, this is falling rate going up to equilibrium curve or equilibrium Marsha contained x and this is xc, correct? So in this regime we can write that n is equal to px plus q, right? So nc is equal to pxc plus q, 0 is equal to px star plus q. So if I subtract so nc divided by xc minus x star, xc minus x star is equal to p and uh, you see that um, q is equal to minus of p x star. So it is equal to nc into x star divided by xc minus x star, right. So n becomes this nc divided by xc minus x star into x minus nc x star divided by xc minus x star. So it is equal to nc into x minus x star divided by xc minus x star, right? So with that, uh, we can simply go for integration and calculate the time required in the falling rate regime, linear falling rate regime. So theta is equal to Ws by A dx by n, integral will be from xc to xf, right? We have included the minus sign here for theta f falling, falling rate. So Ws divided by A, xc to xf, dx divided by nc, x minus x star divided by xc minus x star. So it is Ws into xc minus x star divided by A into nc, then dx divided by x minus x star, so ln of x minus x star, the numerator is xf minus x star, the denominator will be xc minus x star, right? So if we are started, see, if we are started from here, this is xi and we are going here, this is xf, then the total time is theta c 
plus theta f which is w s divided by a n c into x i minus x f into x i minus x f plus w s divided by a n c into x c minus x star into l n x f minus x star divided by x c minus x star. Right. So, <clears throat> these are the equations which we have to use. Mm. Sorry, this is uh, as we have included the minus sign, this should be from x f to x c. So, here it is x c, this is x f and this is x c, this is x f. Done? So, basically the problem is associated to calculation of n c. If we know n c, we can calculate theta, right? And or rather this theta drying or theta theta. Hmm. So, theta total will be equal to theta plus theta downtime, which is basically for manual loading and unloading for batch mode of operation. Now, you see that we can also have a falling rate which is non-linear in addition to the linear falling rate. Okay. So, here we have to go for a bit more algebra. I am not doing the entire calculations. You can do it and uh, see the graph is something like this. This is constant rate, this is linear falling rate, this is x star, right. This is say uh, x c prime and this is n c prime, this is n c, this is x c, say here we have x i and here x f, right. So, theta is equal to theta c plus theta falling linear plus theta falling nonlinear, right. And this part of the curve resembles with a segment of this sort of parabola, right. So, here we can write n is equal to p x plus q, here it is n is equal to p x square or p prime x square plus q prime, correct. So, we have to solve for this uh, p q p prime and q prime and that we can do we have the two data points c for p q calculation. What you can use? At x is equal to x c, n is equal to n c. So, n c is equal to p x c plus q. At x is equal to x c prime, n c is equal to n c prime. So, it is n c prime is equal to p x c plus q. So, p x prime, oh sorry, x c prime plus q. So, solve here from two, data, two equations, you can solve p and q. And for p prime and q prime calculation, so we have this uh, x is equal to x c prime, n is equal to n c prime. So, n is equal to p prime x c square or x c prime square plus q and x is equal to x star, n is equal to 0. So, 0 is equal to p prime into x star square plus q prime. So, from there you can solve p prime and q prime and break the overall integral into three different regime. First is a constant, next is a linear falling and the third one is a non-linear falling rate and from there we can solve, right. So, we have to do this integration of this dx divided by x square plus a square, okay, x square plus a square. 
So that is a standard integral and from there we can solve for this drying time. So based on this idea of drying rate period and respective drying, this drying test and the corresponding calculations of this batch time, let us now have a discussion regarding the different types of industrial dryers, right. Very similar to liquid liquid extraction process, you see, we have different types of feed as we have mentioned in the beginning that we can have different types of feed to be treated in drying operation. It may be a crystalline solid, it may be a granular crystalline solid, it may be a chunk, it may be a sheet like leather or cloth, it may be heat sensitive material, it may be a solution, it may be a slurry with the varied dilution. So different types of feed are possible and that is why we have different dryer designs, okay. So <coughs> classification of dryer design or rather industrial dryers So first one is the state of solid, right. So it may be a flat sheet, crystalline material, amorphous material then granular, solid, maybe a lay or a paste, thick or dilute, slurry or solution, right. For each category we have a different types of dryers. Next, mode of heat transfer. The mode of heat transfer means that see we cannot we in many cases specifically for heat sensitive materials we cannot have direct exposure to hot gas. So there we should go for indirect heating. So mode of heat transfer may be direct and indirect for heat sensitive materials. Right, based on that we all also have a classification. And the third one is mode of operation. For small scale we may go for batch where higher controllability is required. For large scale drying for bulk chemicals we use continuous. Right, so this is the basis of classification. So based on that, we have different group of industrial dryers. In tray dryer, we will discuss about it, in tray dryer, truck dryer, tunnel dryer, We have, if this is the solid, the solids are kept on a tray, right, and the drying medium passes over the bed or over this layer of the solid. So this is called cross circulation drying. This is a typical cross flow arrangement, cross circulation drying. Right, which is practiced in tray dryer, truck dryer, tunnel dryer, etc. So, next for granular solid, we may use pack bed type 
arrangement. Right, we keep the solid here and we pass the drying gas through the bed of the solid. So this is called through circulation drying. For granular, crystalline, hard solids, we use a rotating shell with internal flights. to lift and spray and disperse the solid right we use rotating shell with internal flights that is slightly inclined towards the exit Right? So this gives rise to the design rotary dryer or this uh, steam type rotary dryer where we are practice indirect heating. Etc. Right. For slurry or for solution and slurry, we use drum or rather spray or drum dryers. And finally, five, we may also fluidize the solids to be dried. in the stream of drying gas or drying medium, right? And that gives rise to batch fluidized bed dryer or flash dryers. So let's, with this basic classification, let us come to the actual broad classification in the form of tree diagram. So, first it is the direct heating having uh, physical contact. So, physical contact between gas and solid as alternatively we can have indirect heating. Now in both cases as we have mentioned that we can have batch mode as well as continuous mode. So here it is batch mode of operation and we have continuous mode. So in the batch mode for this direct heating, we have tray dryer, truck dryer, through circulation dryer that is in the form of pack bed and batch fluidized bed dryer. So, in the continuous mode, we have tunnel dryer 
rotary dryer, belt dryer, we can have spray dryer, so tunnel, rotary, belt, spray and we can also have this flash dryer. So in indirect heating mode, again the classification goes to batch and continuous. So in the batch mode, we can have agitated pan dryer, jacketed cells, vacuum dryer, and uh, fridge dryers. These are used for foodstuffs, heat sensitive foodstuffs. And for continuous indirect heating, drum dryer, next it is the steam type rotary dryer, next it is the this uh, screw conveyor dryer and trough dryer. Right, so that is the industrial classification of the different drying units. I will discuss some of them just to understand the operations. The first one what you are going to discuss is spray dry. See what happens here. We have a large dimensional box uh, okay. here we have inlet for fresh air and your exhaust, we have a bank of heating coils which may be steam heated. So, this is air heater and above and over the air heater, we have the stack of trays. Okay. There are holders, tray holders on which we have trays like this. Right. And the solid. So, air heater, so from here and we have a fan. Right? So, to increase the residence time of hot air, so these are the trays and solids to be dried. We have the tray frames and these are the tray supports. So, that is the overall arrangement of the tray dryer. So, you can understand that there we are having the typical cross circulation drying. Now, in the truck dryer, 
the same trace for easy loading and unloading they are having this they are actually mounted on wheels and we have rails right and the same arrangement here you can you can use the heating coils here and this may be the air supply and this is exhaust we have the fans so this is the fan we are out and we have the trays here so truck dryer definitely we have to reduce here the primary objective is to reduce the downtime that is for loading and unloading the time required that is called the time downtime so in order to reduce the downtime and to increase the economy of this entire unit right but at the cost of some increased capital cost at the at the cost of enhanced capital investment so we mount the entire stack of trays on these wheels and wheels are placed on two rails okay so you can take out the entire assembly out of this dryer and then you can unload so the same uh, design is implemented in tunnel dryer what is that here we have a tunnel and there is a partition and in the tunnel these baskets which are connected by non flexible rods they move right in series and each are loaded with trays and tray racks so it moves in from this side here we have trays and moves out from the opposite end and the air flow here we have we are in let we have the heater right and we have the suction fan which delivers the air in this direction and air flows out from another vent so no? so this is typically the structure of this tunnel dryer and uh, specifically used for drying pottery and different ceramics ceramic materials this type of material which can be easily loaded on the tray right really this is really used in chemical process industry but majorly used for in potteries and this sort of ceramic ceramic industries okay so tray dryer truck dryer tunnel dryer we have discussed now you see about the rotary dryer or rather let's discuss about the belt dryer right this is very very basic understanding uh, you see we have a perforated belt right which is mounted on two pulleys on two sides and here we have different chambers so in the first two chambers we blow the hot air this is air heater this is air heater in the upward direction these are air vents which may be circulated as well so these are air heaters and definitely there will be internal fans in the second two we may deliver the air in the opposite direction
right and the third is a cooling section so these two here flows downward here here flows upward and will supply the feed through a hopper here and we withdraw the product from this side and there may be silo and other conveyors right so this is typically the belt drive we have a rotating belt right and based on the residence time we adjust the speed of the belt and the length of the tunnel <coughs> So, tray dryer, truck dryer, tunnel dryer, belt dryer we have discussed. So, next is you see the rotary dryer. In the rotary dryer, we have a rotating shell which is slightly inclined, not this much, which is slightly inclined towards the outlet. Okay. And through a hopper, we deliver the feed here, right? And there are flights, internal flights like this. I will show you in the cross-sectional diagram that how the flights looks like. So there will be a continuous churning of the solid and it is being sprayed in the flow of hot air. The hot air moves out from this side, hot this hot air exhaust, right. And finally, we get the solids from here. So, this is rotated by means of pulley and gear. We may have two different gear and there will be a motor which drives the entire these pulleys and gears and with that uh, this shell rotates at a slow speed. Right. Now, flights, how the, do they look like? Flights looks like this. So, they will pick up the solid from the bottom, right? And as it moves, it will be sprayed, it will be sprinkled in the stream of hot air moving either in the co-current direction or in the counter-current direction. Here I have shown a counter-current direction because the solid moves in this direction whereas the hot air is flowing in the opposite direction. Now, if, if, if I simply avoid direct contact and use these steam tubes inside the shell or we put a jacket here through which the steam flows, it becomes the steam type rotary dryer. Right. So, steam type rotary dryer or rotary dryer, they are very similar in construction, but we have the either internal steam tubes just like shell and tube heat exchanger or we have a jacket, steam jacket covering the external surface, right. And we have the drying being accomplished. So, rotary dryer, truck dryer, through circulation obviously you can understand it is a packed bed type drying. Batch fluidized bed also there is nothing to say about. Now, spray dryer specifically used for solution. Spray dryer, we have a huge conical shaped vessel right and either we have the solution being sprayed in a rotating atomizer disc, this is the feed solution, this 
So we feed the solution. This is the rotating atomizer disk, which sprays the liquid droplets in all possible radial direction. And we have this uh, here being supplied either in the co-current mode, right? Here we can deliver hot air, or alternatively, instead of this rotating this uh, atomizer, we can have uh, two ramming jets. This is feed, and here only we have the hot air. So as the feed solution and the hot air streams ramps each other, there will be dispersion of the liquids in the form of droplets and it will actually having the same similar sort of structure, right. So we have the solid particles which may be separated in a cyclone. Cyclone separator here from we will have the gas and this at the bottom we will get the product, the solid product, the dried solid powder we can get at the bottom. So this is the typical spray dryer, right. Now next is the drum dryer. Drum dryers are used for relatively concentrated slurries. We have a rotating drum, right, in which we charge steam. which is partially submerged in a slurry trough. Here we feed the slurry. Now what will happen as it is concentrated, it will form a layer as the drum rotates in this direction. And here we will place a doctor's knife where from we will convey the solid through a belt maybe. Right. So the slowly moving drum fit which is having the hollow core where steam saturated steam will be supplied. The drum is partially submerged in the slurry trough where we have the feed. Now as the drum moves out, the slurry also get adhered to the surface forming a layer and this layer as it rotates, it's drying up. So from here to here, this is typically the drying time. So accordingly, we have to design the rotational speed and the temperature of the steam and all, right, based on the state of the slurry. And here we have a scrapper that is called doctor's knife and it will scrap the surface of the drum and the dried solid we will get as an output. So this is the typical drum dryer, okay. Now agitated pan dryer, or jacket itself or vacuum dryer, they are just like this uh, tray dryer, right. However, if the trays are jacketed and where we have the supply of flue gas maybe or steam maybe, right, and we have a flow of normal cool air over the surface of these trays, so definitely the moisture will be evaporating from the surface and it will be carried away or entrained by this flowing gas. So alternatively, instead of jacket, we can apply vacuum, right? And from there, we will also accomplish the drying. So that is a typical vacuum dryer which operates with indirect mode of drying in batch. Lastly, the fridge drying. Fridge dryings are used for foodstuffs, right? Like prawn you are supplying this exporting to US. So what you can do, see you take the prawn, you freeze it, to a very low temperature such that all water, whatever is contained inside, it's transformed into ice. And next you place it in a chamber and where we apply vacuum maybe in the order of 0.6 centimeter of uh, this Hg, right. It's a very low absolute pressure, it's a high vacuum. So in that vacuum what will happen, the ice will directly sublimate, it, there will be no inter intermediate water state or liquid state, it will directly sub, sublimate to water vapor and will be carried away by this vacuum pump, okay. So that's the fridge drying system. So once the food stuff is fridge dried, 
you pack it and deliver it. It will remain intact. It will have its food's value over prolonged interval of time. So spray dryer we have discussed. Flash dryer is very similar. So here we supply just uh, the solid in the vertical column, right, where we have the supply of hot air and the solid will be pneumatically conveyed to some other in the downstream in this flash from the flash unit and in the process of conveying it will get dried and next we will feed a cyclone separator we will separate out the solid and release the hot gas so that's typically the flash drying unit so that's all about the industrial dryers so in the next session what we are planning that we will discuss about the design procedure of simple cross circulation drying and another through circulation drying right and therefrom the typically in the batch mode we will consider the tray dryer that how to go for the calculation of nc and through circulation drying so this we will majorly discuss with different conditions and that's the final topic of our this chapter of drying so this is the industrial units and this this classifications the mode of energy transfer the different mode of operations the state of the solid so based on that the different types of variety of the dry designs actually evolved right so that you have to understand and we have discussed about the what are the different types of material we can treat like in tray dryer we can treat this uh, sheet of leather or fabric or maybe a pest or solid or even granular material sometimes you see in tray dryers we can use this perforated tray as well right for granular non sticky solids so in that case we will have the combined uh, these uh, circulations like through circulations and cross circulations as well and the rate of heat rate of drying will be much much higher in perforated plate tray dryer so there are different modifications actually we can implement right and different units are designed for different types of solid materials and we have a wide this variations in this feed starting from the wet solid to granular the wet this flat sheet like solid then granular crystalline solid then amorphous solid and we can have solutions we can have slurries we can have heat sensitive materials so based on that that's why we have so many varieties of industrial dryers operating for different purposes so that's all for this session so in the next session we will discuss about the design considerations and design procedure right very similar to other mass exchangers based on this typical idea of number of heat transfer unit and height of heat transfer unit and from there we will see that how we can calculate the drying time right this theta c and theta f okay for this specific purpose thank you